How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Rare Exports A Christmas Tale. Yeah, this is a Christmas horror movie. Uh, it is December and my channel covers almost exclusively horror movies. So for December, we're going to be taking a look at some Christmas horror movies and one of the first ones to start us out, Rare Exports A Christmas Tale from 2010. This is directed by uh, Jamari Hellander and stars uh, Jorma uh, Tamila and Oni Tamila. Now, these two characters play a father and son, but in real life they have the same last name. Um, so I'm wondering if they are in real life a real life father and son. That would be a uh, quite interesting, and um, yes, these are uh, names I'm very unfamiliar with, so I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of that. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of the plot. I'll try to avoid any uh, significant spoilers, um, but I do want to talk a little bit about the plot, and so you guys get a, a basic understanding of what this film is. It opens up with this American crew in the Arctic, and they're drilling into the ground and taking out core samples. Um, my family watches the uh, the Curse of Oak Island, and they do a lot of that on there. So I was actually really familiar with what they're doing. But basically, it takes a lot of time and energy to dig down. So you send a little drill down, get a tiny sample, and see what's down there, so you can locate something and dig in hopefully the right place. Uh, they send a core sample down, and it's full of sawdust, and they're like, I don't know what to make of it. Why is there so much sawdust down there? And this guy who's funded the expedition says, there's sawdust because that's how they used to pack ice to keep it frozen longer way back in the day. Um, and what he's looking for is something that's been frozen. They dig a little deeper and get that first sliver of ice. So he hands out a bunch of these cards to these construction workers there you know, rougher type people, construction workers, and these work, uh, cards he's handing out his new set of guidelines, and they're things like, you know, don't swear, make sure to wash behind your ears, all these things to be, uh, good people, uh, but like hyper squeaky clean, you know, and they're like, why, why do we have to do this? Well, he put all these rules in effect because he thinks he has found the Grave of Santa Claus, which is a really weird thing to say out loud. Um, but he thinks he's found the original grave of Santa Claus, and he is having his men dig down and hopefully dig him up. Now, all this stuff is saw by a young boy, and he goes and he looks into some deep-cut Santa folklore and finds some dark stuff. Maybe the original Santa Claus wasn't as nice as, as he puts it, the Coca-Cola version of Santa Claus. So he gets to be a little bit unnerved. Uh, time passes, they keep digging, and it gets closer to Christmas, and one day they wake up and the father and son in this village find some very strange things happen. Uh, there's a man that's, uh, I, I th I'm not sure if it's them or if it's their neighbor, but they find uh, the reindeer that were being raised have all been killed and partially eaten. So all these reindeer are dead. But then on top of that, um, the anything that produces heat, heaters, hair dryers, ovens, those start to go missing from the town. And you're like, okay, what's up with that? And then eventually um, they start to see that some of the kids are going missing. Well, while all this commotion is going on, they decide to head up to the American digging team and find it um, mostly deserted, you know, kind of in a scene reminiscent of, you know, like, say, The Thing or something, going to an abandoned Arctic workstation and wondering just what they were doing over there and where did everybody go. Now, when they come back to the village, their paths cross with a mysterious old man, and at first they think this creepy guy is an American working on the site, 
but they begin to suspect that this creepy man might actually be the real original Santa Claus, and and that's where it really kicks in. And I, I guess uh, the first thing we should cover is this guy, the creepy original Santa Claus, and let me say, he does a good job just seeing him sit there, because, you know, he doesn't react to much, and, you know, they'll poke him, and he eventually might, you know, do something, and he might turn and do something drastic, and the whole time you see him sitting there, and you see these people not knowing what to do and thinking he might be a regular guy, you really do get the sense that they're in danger, and they don't know what they're messing with, and that is a really good performance, a really good and creepy. That combined with the lore, it really makes Santa feel like this old-timey agent force that you shouldn't mess with. Now, they don't show you uh, too many, you know, crazy, insane things, but you almost feel like it was some sort of, like, if Lovecraft had to portray a Santa Claus, it'd be something along these lines. Uh, you, you see him as this creepy old man, but you know there's more of a force behind him, and that's really cool. I also want to say, um, the, the way the scares are done, you know, this movie actually doesn't have a very high kill count, um, or at least not on screen. This isn't done like a slasher movie where a bunch of people pop out and then they kill people and then they die. A lot of the death and stuff is done off camera and you find the remnants later and a lot of it is the strangeness about the situation and wondering what might happen and it's weird to know you get the sense that you're really creeped out you know like a loaded uh, gun is just ready to fire but you know you don't actually see too terribly much on camera and the fact that they were able to portray this atmosphere without showing too much right off the bat really says something. Now, I say right off the bat because it does build up to a, a pretty good finale. Um, obviously, no spoilers for the finale, but they do pull certain plot elements where you say, okay, I thought this situation was bad. I thought Santa was bad, but Santa is much worse than I thought he was. And this whole atmosphere and stuff, uh, it really is helped by some pretty dang good cinematography. They have the way it's shot where everything looks old and worn down, but not just old and worn down, but in the Arctic, frozen cold and worn down, and that's an atmosphere you really do have to get right, and it really does look old and decrepit, but it's still a Christmas movie, and colors, particularly the color red, really stand out in this movie. They really pop. So it's run down, but still with a good sense of color. And I really loved uh, the cinematography in this movie. Another thing I didn't suspect to like as much as I would would be the character of the young boy. He's the one you follow primarily throughout this movie. You are with the Americans at the beginning for a little bit, but once it cuts to him watching the Americans, uh, he's who you follow most of the time. And at first you think, he's a young kid in a horror movie, he's good enough, yeah, but you know, whatever. But then, come time for the last act, you really see this kid start to take the situation and just, you know, go with it. And, you know, he finds his guts and he gets some really cool hero moments that I wouldn't have expected from this kid. It's kind of like how the, the kid in the Deadly Spawn became the most capable character. Uh, this kid really becomes a super capable character and gets some pretty awesome moments. Now, there are a few things, you know, at the, the very tail end of the film that are a little bit campy, um, particularly the, the final resolution, but at the same time, they've been through a lot. It, they can do this. It's it's fun. It's a, it's a Christmas movie. Um, but anyway, lots of uh, really good stuff um, in this movie, but I I should mention uh, this is not for kids. You know, there are some fun uh, Christmas horror movies that you can take anyone to. This is really grimy and has some uh, pretty dark moments. Um, so 
it definitely stick the the younger people away from this one, but if you want a really grim and grimy Santa Claus, a very old school fairy tale, because man, some of those old school fairy tales are dark, and I feel that this really does take the atmosphere of those super dark old school fairy tales and apply it to Santa. And there's all these things you can tell they're probably making up for the movie, but if you're familiar with rem with the old timey uh, fairy tales, it's very reminiscent of that, and it does feel like something you know they might have pulled from some obscure lore. And Christmas is a holiday with a more lore than you might expect, but great movie, great atmosphere. I'd heard a little bit about this, uh, and I was really glad um, I decided to check it out this Christmas. Anyway, um, more Christmas horror to come for the rest of October. Um, at the end of the video, I'll put a playlist there to all my Christmas horror stuff. We're going to be growing that playlist all month long. Anyway, um, to everyone who's watched so far, Thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. I do primarily horror on here, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, I definitely recommend sticking around. Uh, Christmas playlist at the bottom. Have a good day, and I'll be back with more Christmas horror the rest of the month. See you guys next time.